In this video, we are going to talk about how to use Gripe and Jenkins for vulnerability scanning. You might be saying to yourself, hey, wait, we don't do vulnerability scanning. It's too hard. It takes too long. But now, containers make it even easier than ever before to find and fix any potential security problems. It can be very difficult to determine if an image is vulnerable or not just by running it yourself. So the concept of automatic vulnerability scanning has become increasingly popular. The problem is many organizations lack the proper tools to effectively scan their images. So in this video, we're going to demonstrate how Gripe and Jenkins can be combined to create a fast, powerful, and most importantly, repeatable vulnerability scanning combination. Here's our starting point for today. We have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.303.1. When this controller was created, it was created using install suggested plugins. I also have an agent connected to this controller. On the agent, I have three pieces of software. I have Docker, I have JQ, and I have Gripe. Down in the description of this video is a link to a gist that has the links to the documentation and any of the commands that we run today. So before we get into actually running our jobs, let's take a look at the documentation for Gripe. Now you can see here that it's a vulnerability scanner for container images and file systems. As I've already said, I have the binary installed on the agent. You'll also notice here that it calls out it works with SIFT. If you haven't watched the video about SIFT, after you finish watching this video, then go watch that video and determine if you want to use SIFT along with Gripe. Now let's go ahead and scroll down here and take a look at what the features are for Gripe. It'll scan the contents of an image or even a file system to find vulnerabilities. That's pretty cool, completely offline here. We can find vulnerabilities for major operating systems. We can find vulnerabilities for language specific packages. And it also supports both Docker and OCI image formats. And to get started, you can just say gripe and give it the image. That's it, very simple. We can also have it check all of the layers. Now by default, it doesn't check all the layers. In my real world examples, I want to be able to look at all the layers because if I'm creating a container image, that image needs to be as secure as possible. So I don't want to just check parts of it, I want to check all of it. Also, you can scan tar files or just raw directories. So what we have today as our starting point is I have a fork of the Spring Pet Clinic repository. We're working on a branch called Gripe. So let's go ahead and scroll down and take a look first at our Jenkins file dash source. We're gonna be also working our way through two other Jenkins files as this video progresses. So Jenkins file source, let's see what we're doing here. Line six, we're just doing a Maven clean package and we're skipping check style. And then we're going to run gripe dir. So we're gonna look at the output of our build clean package. And we're also gonna check all the scope on all layers. So let's get ready to go over to our controller. But before we do that, Let's click on Spring Pet Clinic. Let me copy this link. Now let's go to the controller. New item, we're gonna call it Gripe. Pipeline, click OK. Go down here to Pipeline from SCM. SCM is Git. Paste in our repository URL. The branch we're using is Gripe. And first off, we're gonna say Jenkins file dash source and click Save. And build now. Let's watch what happens. And we can see here from the output that gripe dir only found jQuery and jQuery URI that have vulnerabilities. We can also see what the CVEs are and what the severity is of these CVEs. Now, we just went through and scanned anything that was vulnerable within our application. And from this output, it's telling us that the only things that matter are jQuery and jQuery UI. But we're going to be packaging our application within a container image. 
So we want to be able to scan our actual image that's going to be shipped and deployed to Kubernetes or however you're going to run your container image. So let's go and modify our job to get ready to do that. Before we do that, let's go take a look at our updated Jenkins file. So if we take a look at gripe and go to container one, let's take a look at the few steps that I have here. Now I'm doing a force cleanup of the image that we're going to build just so I get a repeatable process. Yes, it takes longer to build, but I want to show you the cleanest way of this happening. So we remove the image, we do our Docker build, and then finally we do gripe and we specify the image along with its tag. You don't have to specify the tag, we'll use latest by default. And then we're also specifying the scope of all layers. Remember, we want to look at anything potentially within the image that could be insecure. So let's go back over to our job, click on configure, and let's change our dash source to container dash one. Yep, that's it. Click save, then click build now, and then let's watch what happens. And now that this is completed, let's take a look at the output from Gripe. Scroll back up, and it's a lot more than just jQuery and jQuery UI, isn't it? Which, in fact, we can see here that jQuery and jQuery UI are both listed here. Looks very similar to what we saw before. But here's the thing that we're taking a look at. Notice that there are multiple versions of jQuery here. We can see there's 111, there's 224, there's 110, and it all lists back to whatever the CVEs for those were. Let's go back to the top and take a look at what these columns mean. We have name, installed, fixed in, vulnerability, and severity. We can see that we do have some criticals here from APK tools that's within the base image that we're using, which in this case is an OpenJDK 16 based on Alpine 3.8. Let's take a look at it just to see what it is. Take a look at that right here. So our base image is OpenJDK 16 Alpine 3.13. So based on this output, it's like, oh, hmm. That was fixed in 2.12.6 R0, so maybe I need to change my base image to make sure I have an Alpine that has this fix in it. Now, let's make up an example here. I've gone through and I've scanned my image and I see that I have mediums and highs and criticals, and I've built the image. But let's say I want to put a rule in place that I am not allowed to push an image to a registry. I can build it all day long, no problem. But once I run gripe, if I find a critical vulnerability at all, I am not allowed to continue on within my pipeline. And probably that next logical step would be push to a registry. So if I find a critical, I want to stop. Now, fortunately, gripe has an option for that. So let's go over to our container dash two. And what we see here at line 19 is we have a dash dash fail dash on equals critical. So what's going to happen, or what should happen, is if Gripe sees any of our vulnerabilities rate it at a level of critical, then what should happen is this should fail, and then that would be the end of it, and the job would fail out completely. So let's go modify our job, and let's take a look, whoops, too far, configure, Change that from one to two, click save, and we'll click on build now, and then we'll watch the log as it goes through. And we can see here at the end of this output, it says discovered vulnerabilities at or above the severity threshold, which in our case was critical. So we can see that the stage finally done was skipped due to earlier failures. If I click on gripe here, we can see here that when it was generating this output, it failed and completed and skipped the finally done. Why is it important that we run vulnerability scans not only against our application code, but also how it is packaged for deployment? By scanning for known vulnerabilities, we can reduce the risk of attackers exploiting those vulnerabilities. Additionally, by scanning our code and packages, we can find and correct 
those problems before they reach production. Listen, don't skip this important step. With the right tools and procedures, you can significantly reduce your risk of introducing security problems into your production environment. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBeesDevs. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.